Okay, so <laughs> I had to I had to stop and compose myself. <laughs> I, had to, I had to stop the video for a second there and compose myself because I was getting way too emotional. I wouldn't have been able to finish the video. So compose myself and I'm back. <laughs> so if you see a, a short skip, like literally while I was like breaking down, you under, you understand why. I don't want to be here crying because I really want to get to the get to the the uplifting part of the video. So, as I said, man, it was just know it was a very tough situation because I don't want you guys to, you know, get depressed or anything because I'm not in that situation anymore. It's just it's a really hard situation for me to think about because. It's been a while since I've revisited the details of it, and I've never really sat down for a long time. I think the last time I talked about this was when I met my ex-wife. Um, she wanted to know what happened, so I really had to go in detail. And I, ha I also had to talk about this for immigration for some strange-ass reason, <laughs> you know? So for immigration purposes, when you know, when I was trying to get... Um, when I was filing for my, my, um, citizenship and all of that good, all of that good stuff, I had to talk about it. So it's been a while. I'm talking about like over 10 years ago. So, um, it's been a while since I talked about it. So the details, you know, I've always just talked about it in passing, just small little, small little details of it. I never had to, to really talk like outright you know, for a long time describing the details of what happened. Just thinking about it, it makes me really emotional because I know I'm not there anymore, but your mind goes there and you feel like you're sitting. I'm still, you know, so I think I was talking about what I had with me. I had the, I had a Bible with me. That every now and then I would open it and read some scriptures, you know, and I think that's what really kept me going and not giving up on myself and, and you know, life itself. Um, did I have suicidal thoughts? No. Never had a suicidal thought, never thought about offing myself, never, I never did, I never did. Um, cause I'm pretty sure you guys are probably, probably wondering if I ever thought of killing myself. I never thought of killing myself, not even once. Cause I had a very strong belief in, in, in God. So it, and I knew that suicide in, in, for me, you know what I'm saying? For me and what I've learned is that suicide is a sin. Taking your own life is a sin. And I know I wouldn't, if I, I know if I, kill myself i believe that if i killed myself i would not have been going to the better place that i believe in i'm trying to word this in a way so i don't offend anyone that believe in something else okay it's my belief i'm not trying to throw it on you so don't take offense to it okay it's just what i believe so it's just in that in those particular moments that I had a lot of things crossed my mind you know I thought about you know am I ever going to get out of the situation is things really going to get better am I going to be one of those people that's on the street for 20 30 years until you die from hunger or something those are the things that I thought about not a question you guys might have. Did you ever call your people and let them know? No, never did. I never called my people. Why? I'm going to tell you guys. I'm getting to the, to, 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 to the end of this part of it. But as I said, I'm rushing through it because there's so much more I could tell you guys about. But during that time, I never called because of pride. Because I'm supposed to be on my own. I'm supposed to be taking care of myself. And as a man, it means a lot. You know what I'm saying? 
and being a Jamaican, proud Jamaican, being understanding, being taught from birth, then, you know, that when you become of a certain age, you should be able to do this, that, and that, and whatever. You shouldn't be depending on anybody else and all of this other stuff. All that stuff, which I believe now, which is something, things that I talk to my mom about now and ask them, why do they teach us stuff like that? When, you know, if you're in a situation, the best thing to do is ask for help, you know, and now I don't give a crap. I ask for help. <laughs> I'll ask for help if I need it. You know what I mean? Um, regardless of what it is, regardless of what I'm asking help for, I need help because I believe in the power of a community. And that's why I'm, that's what I'm trying to do here so we can help each other um, in the future when I build certain things. So it's just crazy how I got out of that situation because it is because I decided to call someone and I just so happened to call the person and it's, you know, my oldest sister that I hadn't talked to in years. I knew she was living in Florida and I just so happened to be at, I, I was at a place in my life where when it was like I didn't have nowhere else left to turn. You know, it, it was like I know for sure I wasn't calling my brother. I wasn't going to call him, even though he was the closest person that could help me. I just couldn't get the courage to call him because I don't I didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know where I was. He didn't know what was happening because I hadn't spoken to him in over a year. So he didn't know what was happening. So I called my sister. I just, you know, remembered, you know, her number. And I called her. And she's, she, you know, she said to me off the bat, she, she basically was, was saying to me over the phone, because I don't remember the exact wording of everything that she said. But she basically said to me, you know, where have you been? You know, the usual stuff. You know, where have you been? You know, we've called, you know, your brother. And you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, mom has been wondering what's happening with you. We don't know what's going on. What's going on with you? You know, like, are you okay? And stuff like that. I was completely silent on the phone. Wasn't really saying anything. Because I still didn't want to say I've been homeless for the past, you know, almost a year. I still didn't want to say that. I'm getting freaking emotional again. I still didn't want to say that to her because... Of what? Pride. You know? And she said to me, I'm coming to New York in a couple of days. It was around her birthday. And she's like, I'm coming to New York in a couple of days. I don't know why you called me, but I'm coming to New York in a couple of days, and I'm not leaving without you. She literally told me that the night, the night when I called her, she said to me, She, she said to me, I just, I literally just came from church. It was a Thursday night. She said, I just came from church and the pastor literally just told me that a family member is going to call you tonight. She didn't know who it was going to be. So when I called her, she said, 
I'm coming to New York in a couple of days and I'm not leaving without you. And sometimes when you're in the worst place, the worst position in your life and you're thinking nothing, nobody cares, you know, they, I mean, I was thinking for all that time. I was literally thinking that I was not going to ever come out of that situation ever. I didn't trust anyone. As I said, I left when I left my brother. I felt like I was nothing. I felt like I wasn't worth anybody's time. I felt like my brother didn't care about me. I, I you know what I'm saying? And it's tough. It's tough. So to conclude this situation, my sister did come and she said, I'm not leaving you. I'm going to buy you a, um, she came and she said, we, we have to meet up somewhere, whatever the situation is. We, you know, we met up, we talked at the church and stuff like that. And they're like, they're like, we know, you know, we know him, you know, he was coming to church and all this, and then he just stopped. We didn't know what was happening and whatever. Cause I used to, you know, go to church every Sunday and, and stuff like that. So it wasn't like, that's what I was born into. So that was never an issue. Right. Hold on. Let me, Oh my God. I'm really sorry, guys. I, I don't mean to come on here and cry because I'm trying to make this a motivational video. I'm telling you guys right now. And because I know, you know, over the over the years, a lot of things, I mean, that led into, you know, me moving to Florida. That's how I ended up in Florida, in Miami, Florida. My sister came and got me from New York. And, you know, sometimes you, you really are in a place where you feel like nobody really cares, but I'm telling you that someone cares. And I would love to give my sister all the credit in the world, but that was, it was all God. You know, it was, it was, it, it was all God, man. You know, and, and I know you guys might believe in something else. I'm, you know, I'm not here to preach religion. It's not about religion or anything like that. You know, I just want you guys to know that somebody cares. There's somebody that cares about you. And I'm going to get into some more deeper things as we go along. As I do more of these videos, I'm going to get into some more deeper things, um, you know, about, you know, how to operate, how to get into opportunities and stuff like that. But I just want to make this initial videos for you to understand the person that's talking to you and what that person, you know, has been through, you know. I want you guys to understand that through this video, you know, because my life has been a complete roller coaster. I can't tell you the, the amount of jobs that I've had and people getting fired for stupid reasons, not on my part, but for just people just being racist, people that just don't like me. And whatever job I do, whatever I do in life, man, I do it to the fullest. 
you guys see the effort I put out on my YouTube channel. Like anything that I do, I put my all in it. If I don't have the time to do it, I will say I don't have the time to do it. But trust and believe that if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability to do it. Um, you know, because I understand that if you want to get anywhere, if you want to overcome any situation in your life, you got to work hard. I was very oblivious of this fact when I was younger. I thought I had it. I thought I was too smart. I was, I thought I was so smart and don't get it. Don't get it twisted. I know that I'm an, I'm not just tooting my home, my horn here, but I know that I'm an extremely intelligent person. I know that, but let me tell you guys something, man. And I talk about it on my channel a lot, which is a, which is a phrase that I'm planning to coin actually, because I've been recently saying this a lot is that talent is on talent is undeniable, but talent plus hard work is what makes you a superstar. You know, talent plus hard work is what it what is what make you, and is gonna get you somewhere in life. You can't just have talent. Talent alone is not going to do it. I'm telling you guys right now, it's just not it's not gonna do it. A lot of people, they have the talent, they put in the work. And they get to where they want to be and they're like, oh, I made it and now I'm lazy. That's why you have so many one-hit wonders in the music industry. That's why you have so many of them because they get lazy. And they can't capture that. But they don't understand that it's the hard work you got to continue. You got to be consistent. You got to just keep putting out work and just keep doing your thing. Keep trying until you succeed. A lot of people, they give up, right? I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff in, in, in another video coming up. I'm going to talk about the subconscious a lot because it's very important. I will leave you with one thing. There's one book that I'm going to reference very often, and that is Think and Grow Rich. If you do not have that in your library of books that you read, pick it up. Think and Grow Rich rich by napoleon hill please i'm begging you pick up that book i'm going to be referencing that book a lot quoting from it talking about stuff that's in it things that it's a very practical book it's not a book that you just read there's a lot of information in the book but there's also practical things in the book that they want you to put into practice like they they actually recommend in that book that you read a chapter per day one chapter per day don't you don't rush through the book because it's not it's not a novel it's a book that you're supposed to read and put into practice because it gives you stuff to do get what i'm saying so i think we're way over 30 minutes now so I'm going to try to not make this video too long but i hope you guys understand where i'm coming from i really did you know what I'm saying? I had to, even though I still ended up crying again. Um, it's a real soft spot for me because I think that was the lowest I've ever been in my life. And some other things happen too. Like every time I'm doing this, I'm going to try to tell you guys a story of stuff that happened to me. So you can kind of relate to whatever, whatever I'm going to talk about. I, I'm going to try to do some, I'm going to try to tell you guys a story to help you to know me better and to understand what I'm trying to teach you. And really the lesson for today is, is basically that no matter what situations you're going through right now, whatever you're in, whether you can't pay your rent or whatever the situation is, it may be having problems with bills or just having a tough time at it at living. Just remember that somebody cares. You probably just don't know who it is right now. But just remember that they're going to show up at the right time. So I'm not here to tell you, oh, I give you the cliche stuff. Keep your head up and all of this other stuff that doesn't help people. Just know this. We go through everything in life for a reason. 
if it wasn't for that situation, I would not have known how to appreciate certain things in my life. I'm telling you guys that I took so many things in my life for granted on, until that situation happened to me. And a lot of times we really do have to go through some stuff for us to learn from it and grow. So I'm telling you guys right now, it, you know, you may be going through what, what you think is the toughest time of your life. Remember that somebody cares. They're going to show up when, when it's time. God is always on time. No matter what people say, he's always on time. And he's going to be there when you least expect it. You get what I'm saying? Let's keep the faith. Let's keep the faith. Keep believing. We're going to show up for you. You know, somebody's going to show up for you. So, that's my two-piece. That's my two-piece, my two cents, whatever you want to call it. Um, on that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully, you guys learned something from this. I said, as I go forward, I said, I might... Patreon for my Patreon people. I might upload this to YouTube. Um, I might just upload this to YouTube. It's not something that I really want to share on YouTube. You get what I'm saying? But, you know, I might just upload it to YouTube. I really just wanted to keep this Patreon exclusive. Um... It is going to be, but this first video I might just post it because, or I might just put it for early access on, on the Patreon first, and then I'll release it later to YouTube. But this would be the only one, just to let people know what I'm sharing over on the Patreon, so they can, you know, might be more likely if they want to have motivational videos. I really don't want to do this on the YouTube channel because I want to just keep it to strictly reaction and my thoughts and certain things i really don't want to be there and you know what i'm saying because these videos are going to take me you know 40 40 minutes at a time you know 45 minutes to an hour sometimes to make so and plus they're not going to be edited i don't want to edit them you know what i'm saying so it's crazy so thank you guys so much for tuning in man it's been real and I hope you guys learned something from this. And if you're in a bad place, man, just remember what I said. You know. Um, so I'll talk to you guys later. Catch you guys.